Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Thursday. We've got snow coming down up here in the Wasatch of uh, Utah. So this is one of the live cameras up there at Solitude Ski Area. I mean, it's been coming down pretty good. Nice circulation around this area of low pressure, some lift into the heart of Little and Big Cottonwood Canyons. In fact, let me show you what the, uh, the snow stake looks like up at Alta. And that is pretty darn good, six, seven inches. Certainly more than what I was thinking was going to fall, but uh, this is some really good snow up there all the way down to about 7,000, 7,500 feet roughly in that neighborhood. Um, but excellent accumulation. In fact, when we look at the, uh, the radar across the west, it's all from an area of low pressure. You can almost see the spin coming directly over Salt Lake and the Wasatch heading into uh, Wyoming. And so when you get that sort of spin, you can create some extra lift. And that's what we're seeing over the, uh, the Wasatch. In fact, let me take you in uh, right to uh, Salt Lake here and notice all of the blue. So it's definitely cold enough to see snow. And the snow level might be lower than 7,000. I mean, looking at this, uh, it definitely appears as though it could be lower than that. Um, so that's gonna continue for at least the next hour maybe even a couple of hours, so definitely a morning event. Up in the parts of Wyoming, the uh, low, this is where it's headed, so you've got uh, a return flow out of the south, and that's moving moisture up into parts of Wyoming out of northern Colorado, and then you've got the return on the backside with some rain and snow down through parts of southwest Montana and also Idaho, so this is a pretty good little storm system uh, moving through this morning. All right, let me show you my bullet points here. So we've got a couple of things to talk about. First, current storm system. Um, in Colorado, if we happen to see anything, it's probably as far as snow above 10,000 feet. Most of the action, you can see it on radar, is Utah, it's Idaho, it's Wyoming. In Utah, that 7,500 foot line for rain, snow, it may be lower than that. Um, but I think, you know, once you once you get above that, that's where you're going to see the best snow accumulation. Wyoming, it's about 8,500 to 9,000 feet. Now, after the storm departs um, over the next 24 hours, we're going to see a series, at least two windy cold fronts race out of the Pacific Northwest down through the northern Rockies and then brush as they move through Utah and Colorado. So 1017, 1018, and then again 1019 and 1020. And when I say windy, it's definitely going to be windy over parts of um, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado, especially the central and northern mountains of Colorado. The Front Range High Peaks, for example, on 1018, I'm thinking 90 mile an hour wind gusts on the top of Long's Peak, Mount Meeker up there. Now the best odds of snow, here's the timeline for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Interior, BC. Of course, it's today in Utah. We're seeing that happen right now. And then again on 1020, and then again on 1024. I won't go through all these dates, but you can take a look at those. All right, water vapor satellite imagery, it is pretty obvious. There's our area of low pressure. The moisture's in the whites and the blues. Dry air is in the oranges, the reds, and the black colors. So you've definitely got action over a lot of the Intermountain West with that area of low pressure moving up into this direction. Look behind it. We've got a, the next dip in the jet area of low pressure. So what's going to happen is that low will send these windy cold fronts down. So we've, we're already establishing this northwest flow, and that will send these cold fronts right down the pipeline in the extended forecast. Let me load in the forecast radar here. And we'll take a look at the timing for all of this. So what you're looking at is the future radar. This will start this at lunchtime today, Thursday, October 16th. Um, so our low pressure is probably somewhere up in here by that point, but you're still seeing some wrap around snow showers there through a lot of uh, the Tetons, the Wind Rivers, down into the Wasatch and the High Uintas. A little touch right there in northern Colorado, but the bulk of it is up here in parts of northwest Wyoming and a lot of Montana and it's rolling across the uh, Dakotas. All right, let me move this into the future. Here we are dinner time today, lows moving away. Everything starts to clear by the early morning hours tomorrow. That low is gone and then it becomes about what's happening up here because that's the beginning of our first windy cold front that's going to race down 
through the inner mountain on this sort of west-northwest flow pattern. All right, let's move this ahead. Here we are. Um, here's lunch on um, Friday, and there's one front right there. So there it is starting to march its way through. Now, it doesn't have a whole lot of moisture with it. Um, there's dinner time on Friday. There's early on um, Saturday morning. And again, there's your front. It's got a lot of wind with it, so it's really going to compress the pressure gradient. And it's going to really force the wind to blow in a lot of Wyoming and a lot of Colorado as that sucker comes through. But there's not a lot of... Uh, there's just not a lot of moisture with it. So then that moves through, and then here's lunchtime on Saturday. There's dinner time. Here we are, um, let me go back. There's the early morning hours, roughly midnight-ish, Saturday into Sunday morning. There comes the next windy cold front, and it's gonna do the same maneuver, and it's gonna roll right through um, the inner mountain, the northern Rockies. So that's how it all sort of plays out in time. If we take a quick look at some of the, uh, the pressure uh, anomalies here, in the middle of the atmosphere up at about 18,000. This is the current day, so this is Thursday. Um, so there's our area of low pressure right there. There are the lower pressures, and again, the track of that takes it up in this direction. Big area of low pressure off the east coast. Uh, looking down the road here, this is Saturday, 1018, and that is the first of two windy cold fronts. Again, that's going to be moving in this direction, and it will brush parts of uh, northern Utah and Colorado with wind, and especially windy up in Wyoming as well. Final uh, pressure anomaly map. This forecast is from Monday 1020. This would be the second windy front, and you can see it right here. So look at that big drop in pressures behind it. That will be very windy as well on Monday 1020 through probably Montana, Wyoming, northern Utah, and also Colorado. You can kind of see how these wavy pressure lines have developed. Um, kind of a giveaway as well to some of that uh, that bending of the pressure gradient. It's like a tropical system there and another low. Look at that moving right through the uh, the Washington DC Baltimore Philadelphia triad right there. Okay, let me uh, let's go down to mm, let's look at the uh, the 10 day no the, the five day snow forecast. So this takes you out five days roughly. Big snow up here in parts of. Uh, uh, BC, interior BC coastal range, and a little bit through Alberta as well, just outside of Calgary up towards Banff. Um, and there's about a four-day window where a lot of this is going to happen. I showed you that at the top there with the, the top of this, with the, the timeline. So, and then you've got a little bit here in the parts of Nevada, and, and a nice shot here, and some of that's falling right now, in the Wasatch and the High Uintas. Anytime you see the purple or pink, that's over six inches of snow accumulation. Um, and then you're seeing probably 6 to 12 up here in the parts of Wyoming, southwest Montana, glaciers in for 6 to 12, um, a bit there in parts of Idaho, and a little bit in the central and northern mountains of Colorado. So let me zoom in on that. Here's the zoom through parts of Wyoming and Idaho, um, Utah and Colorado. So there's your snow accumulation up through parts of southwest Montana, potentially 6 to 12. Same up here through parts of uh, a little bit over the Tetons, maybe up to 6. 6 in the Wind Rivers, more though up towards Yellowstone and the Bighorns. And this is pretty good stuff right here. Um, you know, there's some additional accumulation on uh, for the Wasatch on top of what we've already seen. Uh, potentially up to six plus additional for the high Uintas. And most of the snow in Colorado is right along I-70 and north. So let me zoom into that. In Colorado, notice not a lot in southern Colorado. You can really almost draw the line across I-70 with less accumulation to the south and maybe up to six inches here across the central and northern mountains. And there's that snow through the high Uintas. Um, let's zoom in on a couple of these snow plumes. So this is for Jackson, Wyoming. I've been tracking this the last few days. I mean, that's why I've been showing it. Now, it's down a little bit as far as forecast amounts for Jackson, the town of Jackson. Um, but you can see a little bit here on the front end, another one there around 2021, and then another shot with a nice accumulation curve there, 26, 27, 28, and 29. This takes us all the way to Halloween. Um, and this ensemble is at uh, about eight and a half inches of total accumulation. So again, that's down from where we've been, but still looking at some nice accumulation there for Jackson. I've got another snow plume. This is for Berthed Pass in Colorado. About seven and a half total for the period through Halloween. 
um, a little bit, it, this comes in just little teeny bits. There's uh, a little there, uh, 19, 20, 21, and then it, a, a tiny bit there, and then a nice little curve right there up uh, 26, 27, and 28. Some of the error bars are up at about a foot. Um, so th God, that's going to do it for this, uh, this forecast update. We've got a storm underway right now, and then we've got two additional windy cold fronts with a little bit of snow coming. Thanks for tuning in here. I always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.